Hi! Ah! Ah! You need to record your weekly video! But mom... Okay, fine. But what should I do my video on this week? I don't know. Why don't you do a video on how to use a pterodactyl game panel to manage your Minecraft server? Okay, that sounds good. Just give me a second quickly. What is up crafters? So if you've ever run a Minecraft server before, then you've probably seen a game panel like this, or this, or even this. Now it might be a bit confusing at first, so today I'm going to go over all the basics that you need to know about using the pterodactyl panel, and if you're a seasoned user, then I will be sharing some advanced tips as well. Now just about 99% of hosts use a pterodactyl panel, the only two exceptions are Apex Hosting and Eternos, Adernos, why is the English language so weird? So without any further ado, let's go to the panel. Let's all go to the pterodactyl panel. Okay, so here I am on my panel, so I'm just going to go through each individual page and what it does and you may have some different pages than I have but I'm just going to be going over mainly what the default and basic pages do so first of all we'll start off with the console page so on this page is where you can start up your Minecraft server you can restart it you can stop and if it like is dead you can kill it or if you just want to stop it really fast which you probably shouldn't but you know and we can also view statistics about how our server is doing. So let me just start it up quickly. One eternity later. So there we go, our server's back online. Now we have these different graphs of how our server is doing. So we have the memory and the CPU load. You can also see that up here. Pretty self-explanatory. So let's move on to the files page. So here's the file manager page. So this page you're going to be on a lot. So you will go in here and like check your logs or add plugins and stuff. You can also use an FTP such as WinSCP or FileZilla to manage it, or you can just use the web file manager. I typically just like this. There are pros and cons to using both, which we will get back to later. So let's go into the plugins page and we have via version right here. So let's say we click on this and we want to move it and move it into another folder. So let's say we wanted to move it into the B stats folder. So we would just type B stats and then a slash. So then this is the new location of where it's going to be at. So we just click enter and then we go in here and there's our jar right here. Now, the only problem with this is if we click on this and we move it, we can't move it back out of the B stats folder. So you would have to use an FTP client for this, which we will talk about more later. And of course you have some more options here so we can rename it. So let's say we didn't want this one right here. There we go, you just click enter. And then we can also go over here and copy it. You can archive it. So the thing with these panels is they use a weird format called tar.gz. So I recommend using the program WinRAR for these. It's really good for these different types of files. So yeah. Okay, so now we have databases. So MySQL databases are used in certain plugins if you want to make things like cross server, such as luck perms, like you want people to have permissions on all your bungee cord network or whatever. So most of these panels will usually give you the ability to create a database right on here. So we can just go ahead and click new database, give it a name. So we'll just say test. And I've never used this connections from, so you shouldn't need to edit that. And then we'll just click create database. So plugins will ask for the name of the database and like the endpoint, the username, and then the password. So I don't care that I'm showing it because I'm literally just going to go ahead and delete this. You can also rotate password and that'll make a new password for you. So you'll just go ahead and enter that into your plugins. So pretty self-explanatory for that. I'm Then we can delete it. And to delete it, you have to give the name of it. So just like this and then delete database. There we go. Now you understand databases, hopefully. And now we have schedules. So this is actually a really cool feature that I recently learned about. So what we can do is just go ahead and click create schedule and then whatever name we want it. So we'll just say backup server. So this is called cron. I really don't know how this works. I'll link something in the description if you want to learn more about it, but we can just click and show the cheat sheet. So this is basically used for how often you want to execute this task. So basically right now it's going to execute every five minutes. I think that's a little excessive for making backups. So let's take a backup every Monday. So we'll just go and put a zero right here, put a zero right here, star, star, and 
mun. So that will take a backup every Monday. And then we need to click create schedule. And then we need to click it again and add a task to the backup. So you can add multiple tasks to one schedule. So we will just create backup and yeah, you can also enable continue on failure in case your backups get full and you don't want this task to just stop after that. So we'll just go ahead and click create task and we haven't talked about backups yet. So if we were just to run now and then we head to the backups page, here's our backup right here. I have like no files on the server, so it took almost no time at all to take a backup. But while we're here on the backups page, all you can do is you can click create backup and we can give it a name. If you leave this blank, it'll make a nice name like backup at the exact time. So I usually just leave it blank and we can just start backup. And depending on how many files you have in your file manager, this could take a really long time. So we can just refresh the page and it's done. And now let's say we wanted to restore a backup. So you'll just want to click on these three dots right here. And you can also download it. So if you want to back up your server and download it to your computer, this is a good way to do so. But to restore it, we can click on that. So in most cases, I recommend selecting this. You can play around with this if you want to learn more. And then just restore. These little guys will come up and it's already gone because I have like no files on my server. This could take a while depending on how large your server is. And then we have the users page. So if you have a friend that you want to give access to your server, you'll just want to go over here to new user and then their email on the panel. So they will have to sign up for whatever hosting you're using. Or if you like have your panel yourself, you'll need to register an account for them. So we'll just crafted Croy at hotmail.com nobody uses hotmail anymore but whatever so we can go ahead and click which permissions we want them to have so you can also click this up here and it will give all the permissions for a category so obviously don't just give any random joe blow on the street access to your server especially the more sensitive stuff like the files because they would have access to all your server files so just be careful with who you trust obviously and yeah then we can just click invite user okay so the network page now i get a lot of questions about this so basically what we would do is just click create allocation it doesn't work for me but it probably will work for you depending on what hosting you're using so Basically, this is a secondary IP for our Minecraft server, which can be used for certain plugins like items adder to host your resource pack with or another one's dine map with like the map of your server on the web. So this is mainly just used for plugins. You really don't need secondary IPs because you can't actually connect to these. You won't have to only connect to the primary. So I hope that makes sense. If not, then I don't know. I guess you're just screwed. You don't understand it. Okay, so right here we have the startup. In most cases, you shouldn't need to edit any of this. It should be fine. You may need to change your Docker image depending on what version of Minecraft you're running. Like typically Minecraft 1.8 runs on Java 8 and the new versions of Minecraft, they usually run on a newer version of Java. If you don't understand that, then don't worry about it. Probably is fine if you're running just 1.20.4. So we can also change the name of our server jar. You can view your startup commands. Some hosts will let you change this to use like eight cars flags or whatever, but you probably shouldn't need to worry about the rest of this stuff. All right, so here's the settings page. So this page doesn't really have a whole lot, but we are able to change the name of our server so we can make it like whatever we want. We have subscribe to crafted Croy now and then just click save you can also add a server description if you'd like save so that's going to show up like in the panel with when you have like multiple servers you know we can also launch our sftp with this so we can just click launch sftp so this is better than just going into like your FTP and entering in all the details. You can just open it this way. I will leave a link to WinSCP in the description if you'd like to download it. So you would just type in your password and then you would have access to the file manager and you'll just want to go ahead and type in your password and then okay. And now we're able to view our server files in an FTP client. So there are a couple advantages to using the FTP over the web panel, one being that you can upload larger files, like some panels cap it at 100 megabytes. So if your server files are like 
a, a lot, like a couple of gigabytes, then you probably won't be able to upload it that way. You don't have to upload it this way. But if you remember what I was talking about before, like in here, if we wanted to take this, we can just move it out. We don't have to like download it and then upload it into this file folder. We can just move them back and forth. This seems very minimal, but trust me, this is actually in some cases can be very beneficial. Some people just prefer to use it this way. They don't like using the web version because they're able to just like click on these and then open them with Visual Studio Code or whatever this code editor is, I guess. Advantages to using this, I still prefer the web editor, but I still have to use this at times for doing large uploads and stuff. So yeah. What are you still doing here? The video is basically over by now, but I guess if you'd like to hear me advertise all my stuff like a six year old in a self promo channel, then stick around. So first of all, now that you know how to use the Pterodactyl panel, then check out Spring Racks Hosting. I use them to run my Minecraft server, the Crafted SMP on, and they have a Pterodactyl panel. So now you know how to use it. So you'll be all set to run your Minecraft server on. You can also check out my other Minecraft server, Ruxer. We just released a new season of Lifesteal SMP, so if you like that, then join. Make sure to do all that YouTube stuff, like just smash that like button, you know? And until next time, I will see you on the other side. Happy crafting. <laughs> Game panel to manage your, your Minecraft server. Is that too snotty? <laughs>